Hey, what's up, YouTube? We're back at it again for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta, Season 6, Episode 3, Sister Wives. You already know it's your girl, Miss Tink. That's M I C C, not M I S S. The channel is Natural Power Sister TV, and let's get into it. All right, so the show picks up where we left off at. We see Rashida and Kurt talking or whatever about what the Red Rooster, you know, told her or whatever. And, you know, first Kurt line, then he actually wanted to confess or whatever, told him that, you know, he cheated on her, of course, and she getting all upset. I'm sorry, y'all. I cannot take Rashida seriously. I cannot. The way she even threw that play, girl, you didn't mean that shit, okay? I would have been a straight up... <laughs> baseball hit okay wouldn't wouldn't even have been a strike straight up to the dome if that was me i just can't take her serious especially the way he's been disrespecting you or whatever she's talking about i may not be perfect but i but i do i look like the type of bitch you would cheat on with strip club girl Halle Berry been cheating on okay she been cheated on okay then had multiple husbands and she is way way more talented than you ever be okay boo so chill with all of that you just putting on for the damn cameras or whatever. Talk about you need to get out. You need to get out. I'm too sick. Okay. 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 I'm just saying, girl. Just you just putting on for the cameras. I, I can't. I can't take it serious. So you know, of course, bunion head leaves or whatever. After he, you know, feel like you know you throwing stuff at me, nigga. Bye. Putting on for the cameras, acting at its worst. So whatever. That's gone and gone. Let's get to some more. Um. And I'm looking down because, of course, I'm looking at my notes or whatever. So, next we see Jogmina with Waka and um, uh, 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 who else? Uh, Scrappy with these cars that Mona paid for. Probably the only one who actually bought their car was uh, Waka Flocka or whatever because we know he still do his little thing or whatever. But still, Mona paid for this shit, if you ask me. So, they all talking about their girls or whatever. Of course, it got out about... Um, Jock and the Red Rooster. Waka want his family bag. Scrap don't know what he want to do with Bambi or whatever. And Waka, his main thing is like, look, I'm listening to all these niggas talk about this shit. This ain't for me. I want my wife back. I want my family back. Putting on for the cameras, if you ask me. I, I'm just saying whatever. So then, of course, they talk about the whole bed thing that they got going on at um, um, that Jock and uh, Red Rooster got going on or whatever. So, I guess. Anyways, next we see... um. Tommy and Tammy going out or whatever to some fashion show or whatever, you know. Tommy talking about she want to upgrade her friends or whatever. I'm just saying, like, the only friends you got are within the cast or you just have to film with them. But, okay, girl. Okay. So, Erin has a little fashion show. We see, you know, counterfeit dime. You know, she doing her little walk. I actually like the lighter pink on her than that dark-ass pink on her. And she looked all right. Mm hmm Then of course we see uh Tommy already spotted Mimi and of course the rooster Melissa sitting over there. I ain't like how Melissa hell looked on the night of that fashion show, but whatever, I guess. Mm, whatever. Um after that, uh Mimi and Tommy everybody go meet up. Mimi, I mean Tommy apologizes to Mimi about the whole situation or whatever. And Mimi's like, look, that shit was crazy, but an apology would do. And of course, uh Tommy apologized to counterfeit dime because you know she tried to warn her or whatever. Um, about, I guess, about Jocelyn and all of this stuff and come to find out that, you know, counterfeit dime was right. So, Tommy speak day piece or whatever. And does this fake ass bear hug with the rare rooster. And we all could tell Tommy was trying to keep her composure. I love when Tommy said, this bitch ain't never gonna change. Because, uh, rare rooster time, I tried to reach out to you. Girl, really? Really? You gonna reach out to her after the bullshit? You didn't. You talking mad shit in the confessionals, but you damn sure didn't say shit to her face because you know Tommy will pop your cockadoodle ass. I'm just saying. Tommy was like, you know what, bitch? Let me just get the fuck out of here, put on my shades, and walk out. I don't even blame you because we know Tommy. That bitch crazy. I'm just saying. Then after that, um, Carly wants to tell the whole drama. Counterfeit Don felt the type of way. was like, you know what? Let me just move around here because I ain't got time for this mess or whatever. And I felt where Tammy was coming from, like... Why are you telling me this shit here? Hey, even told Rashida, even though Rare Rooster didn't already told Rashida, I felt where Tam was coming from. I don't want to hear this shit. Not here. So I'm just going to go. I don't blame her. Because we all know the Rooster is messy as hell. Although she stand firm in her shit, the bitch is messy as hell. Okay? I'm just saying. Anyways. um, Next we see Rob 
the worm and come to find out they got another girl called you know Keanu Kiki so I'm gonna call them to Kiki and the worm you know what I'm saying or wait what was oh, damn I forgot that cartoon whatever we see Kiki and the worm and Rob they got this little threesome relationship all kiss girl better than me I couldn't do it both of them are strippers both of them done fuck bunion head I said oh lord just alright mom first it was Mama D and Ernest with I can never Oh, the way she just was on that nip. Now we see um, Rob kicking in the worm doing all that stuff. I was like, Lord Jesus. Okay. Mm -hmm. They all happy. They all talking about the situation. First, we see the worm talking about, I am done with Kurt. And that's when, um, you know, Rob the Fraud was like, uh, no, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Kiki. Kiki, I, really, Kiki? You see, you know, bunion head like the strippers, so, all right, girl. All right, whatever. Rob talking about the whole thing with Mimi bringing up, talking about he was a scam and all the scam arts and all this stuff. And the worm talking about you need to go talk to that bitch. Okay, worm. All right, whatever. I guess. Mm-mm. I guess. Talking about he wanted to clear his name. All right. I'm just saying, especially when you put it out there that you got out of jail for money laundering, I wouldn't put anything past y'all three. All y'all three. All y'all three. All three of y'all seem like some scam artists, if you ask me. But, okay. I guess. Anyways. um, Next, we see Stevie cleaning the house behind an 18... <laughs> Nigga, please. That shit... That, that, that couldn't have been Cheryl. Cheryl would have that shit right there. Get your ass up. Clean it. When, I don't care if you at school. Where the hell was she anyways? I thought she was going to school online. So she not at the house. So her and her friend dirty up the house. All right, Steve. All right. So, of course, we know uh, Savannah got a little issue with um, with uh, uh, Jocelyn, which I feel like, baby, that ain't got shit to do with you. Whatever. If anybody should have the issue, of course, it should be Mimi. So, of course, Mimi come over there. They talk about the whole situation about where Rob the Frog... Bunyan head having a kid and the whole thing with Jocelyn. I, I honestly felt where Mimi was coming from about everything that uh, Jocelyn done said about Stevie doing shit to Lil Eva and all of that stuff. So I understand that. And Mimi basically like, look, if this is your baby, it is what it is. But I do not want her around my daughter. And I'm like, I understand you don't want Jocelyn around. But if that is his baby, which we, which, you know, they say, they say she is, you know, Bonnie Bella. I hope I said her name right. Um, how are you going to stop them two sisters being around each other? But okay. All right. All right. Okay. Whatever, Mimi. Whatever. Whatever. All right. I guess. So, but I understand what she's coming from about Jocelyn not being around Lil' Eve, especially all that shit that Jocelyn said. And I fell on there like, no. Nah. Mm -mm. But my thing is, you talking about the stuff that Jocelyn said could ruin your daughter's life. What about what you did? Because that shit definitely is going to harm her ass too because kids are cruel. Especially when she get older. But you swinging on shower rods. I'm just saying. But okay. Alright. 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 Counterfeit Don meets up with um Tommy and you know in that call that well maybe she saved up. I don't mm -mm. Mona brought that shit. But Mona brought that shit. They all meeting up and talking and basically air out, you know, everything and you know, Tommy realized, you know, Counterfeit Don was only looking out for her and warning her about Jocelyn and everything. So, you know. And honestly, I can say I do like Jocelyn and Count not Jocelyn, but um Tommy and Counterfeit Don together. For some strange reason, I actually could see them two being cool. I don't know why, but I do. Hmm, I don't know. I just I just do for some reason, but okay. So then of course, um she asked, you know, could um uh, the rooster and Tommy get cool, and you know, Tommy, like, bitch, Tommy ain't feeling her, and I don't blame her, you know, Tommy, you know, you fuck the nigga, and all of this stuff. Although, you know, it takes two to tango, but we all know disaster and lackluster is in jail right now, so I'm saying, okay. Then they talking about let's go on a double date or whatever. So I guess they're gonna do the double date, and they all cool, okay, cool. Next, we see um, Mimi meets up with um, Rod the Fraud or whatever. Basically, to get some answers, uh, Mimi, why is this any of your business with what's going on with Bunyan Head and Rashida? Although I understand that's your girl, but why are you digging for answers? If that nigga's your ex nigga, let that nigga be your ex. I'm sorry, Melissa, you better than me, because if that was me trying to get with Mimi, um, boo, you doing a little bit too much. Stay in your lane, and unless Rashida come to you, you stay in your lane and stay out of their business and you just be that supportive friend but trying to get answers and all and ain't got shit to do with Eva and ain't got shit to do with 
anything that involves your family, your money, anything like that. So why? Wow. You're just doing it for a storyline if you ask me. That, that, that couldn't have been me. So um, even before they even, um, you know, not even five minutes before they sit down, they already going back and forth reminiscing about the past. She talking shit about him. Melissa sitting in the back like... Just checking to see if anything pop up. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. But my thing is, Melissa, what you going to throw? I'm going to throw one of them bottles. I don't blame you, girl. But okay, girl. And um, they all going back and forth. And, you know, of course, Rod going to bring up, talking about you talking about me. You swinging on shower rods. And I was like, ooh, that is true. But okay. But like I said, Mimi, that was none of your business to be even sitting there. You just did it to me for camera time, if you ask me. Acting as worse or whatever. Um, but before they even got into all of that, because you know that didn't even go that far, and he just you know text. Um, he had um um Kiki and the worm in the damn um in the damn car waiting on you know waiting on the signal. Come in now, you know what I'm saying. I'm just saying they come in now, and he's like, oh shit, you know me like what the hell. But before then, we see um Jocelyn and Melissa going to the DNA thing. Melissa trying to hide her like. Put the shades on. But, you know, she care about Jocelyn and their friends or whatever. They going into the DNA thing talking about what they seen on TV. Baby, that's TV. This is real life. That damn DNA lady was like, oh, yeah, you had it inside of a Ziploc bag, which messes up, you know, the, you know, the, the, um, you know, us trying to get DNA off it, tampers with it. And if you think you're going to put this up with court, it is not finna fly because Stevie has to consent to this, Okay. And even if we do do it here in the lab, it most likely is going to come back unreadable or denied. So you basically just waste your time. I'm, I'm just saying, like, I don't know. I mean, girl, all right. Got in a Ziploc bag? Girl? Okay, girl, I'm just saying. No. Mm, whatever. Let's get to some more shit. So this ain't going in no particular order. We also see Waka Flocka. Trying to come home to Tammy or whatever. Tammy, if you ask me, girl, you putting on for the cameras. That's all you did. You just put on for the cameras, trying to show that you strong or whatever, girl. Last time I checked, whenever I was on Instagram or whenever I did see a glimpse of you and him, ain't y'all back together. So you just did all this for the cameras. I, I'm, I'm sorry. Walker well, talking about he want to come back home. He got a suitcase. He going to try to work hard. He's still in the doghouse, so she say, or so she was told to say. And so, she's talking about she got four bedrooms. So, apparently, I guess he's going to either be sleeping in one of them bedrooms, but not in the bed with her. But yet, he's still in the same house. And he's talking about he want his family back and stuff. I guess, work on that. But, again, you just put on for the cameras. I don't believe none of that shit, if you ask me. No, I do not. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying. Whatever. Um. Then, of course, once... Uh, Rob the Fraud sends, you know, his little text to Kiki and the Worm. They all come in and they like, damn. You know, Melissa like, what the hell? Um, Melissa, I don't understand why are, why is everybody getting involved and in talking to Kiki and the Worm? But Rashida has, like, everybody talking to everybody else except the main people that involves. You know what I'm saying? Um, come to find out, of course, Kiki and the Worm put it out there that they both were sleeping with Bunyan Head. But this time, are you proud of that? You this, you that, you this, giving her two cents, which was t totally unneeded. I understand you care, but it's totally unneeded. If anything, they need to be talking to Bunyan Head. I'm just saying, that's just how I feel or whatever. And then, of course, they go back and forth. About the situation and Melissa was like, you know, this is my shit. I could tell you to get the fuck out. She said, you could tell me to get out. And Melissa was like, get your shit, get the fuck out. She's like, gladly, deuces. All three of them walk out or whatever. And I must have fell out when she said that damn chihuahua fur coat. <laughs> Woo! I'm just saying that she was kind of funny to me. And I don't know about y'all, but that she was kind of funny to me. But I mean, was it cold? Anything for you to be wearing all that? I'm just saying, but all right. And then he walks out or whatever with both of his, you know, with Kiki and the worm on his arm, whatever. Kiki talking shit, so is the worm talking shit. If anything, I feel like Melissa will fuck Kiki before she fucked the worm. But, you know, hey, it is what it is. To me, Kiki looked better than the worm, if you ask me. But I'm, I'm just saying, it is what it is. Um, After that, um, Tammy goes and talks to Rashida. They had this heart-to-heart -heart talk. I'm sorry, y'all. I do not feel sorry for Rashida. I just feel like, girl, like, you've been embarrassed since season two. It's not how many years later? I'm just saying. 
I mean, the only person who actually dropped a tear that made it look realistic was Tammy. She dropped some tears on Q. Rashida still ain't seen one yet. Crocodile tears, if you ask me, it is what it is. And so, of course, that's when, um, what's her name? Tammy was like, you know, you need to let them know what it feels like to be without you and all that stuff. So I guess that's how we ush into what we're going to see later on about the divorce thing or whatever, if they really even got a divorce. Because I feel like they putting on for the damn cameras. I'm sorry. That's just how I feel. I'm sorry, y'all. That's just how I feel or whatever. I'm just saying. And then, of course, he's talking about, you know, he's going to have to take a paternity test. Okay, the same way he did with Baby Carter. Mm -hmm. We'll see if he do all that and everything like that. Because, of course, in the beginning, Bunyan Head was talking about he didn't know that she stayed in the building. Really, Bunyan Head? Okay, whatever. This acting as worse, if you ask me. The episode pretty much ends where we see um, Counterfeit Dime and Tommy going on a double date. So, Counterfeit Dime is with this chick called Lexa Scott. Apparently, she was with Fatty Wap um, right around the time... Um, you know, he cheated on her with Masika Kalisha and they had that baby or whatever. So now she fucking with him. I was like, oh, okay. I mean, everybody just want to just dip in the lady pond, I guess. I guess, you know, lesbianism sells. I, I don't know. Just to me, it's making a mockery. And y'all already know how I feel because I'm a floating rainbow fairy myself and ain't never going to change that. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. You already know. The only way y'all can ever hear about Evia being with any type of, you know, dude is if we're having a child and we're co-parenting. Ain't no relationship. We're just co-parenting. Okay? Okay. That's if I don't go to the fertility clinic first. Mm. I'm just saying. But I just, uh, I just feel like you're just putting it on for the camera. But we see Miss Tommy. She doing her little tip for tat thing. So she's with Jock. Well, looks like uh, counterfeit diamonds in another, you know, little triangle thing because she don't like, damn, like, I'm cool with the rare rooster. I'm okay with the rare rooster, so you say. And now this, you know, and of course, Tommy, like, shit, hey, tit for tat. You got, you fuck with my nigga disaster and lackluster, I'm going to get yours. I, hey, y'all. I'm just saying, you know, Jock is a funny nigga, and the damn show his hair be laid like a motherfucker. It do. I'm just saying. He look like one of them, what what they call them? Them old, I can't even think of it. What year was that? Basically, he looked like one of them, uh, one of the little, I can't even get it. Y'all know what he looked like. His shit do be laid, though. I got to give it to him. His stylist or whatever, how to be having that little curl or swoop, slick down better than half them bitches on this damn show. So I feel you. And you know. Tommy, she looked cute, too, with the blonde. You know, she looked a little cute. And that's, you know, pretty much how it ends or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm waiting to see next week because that's when we see that um a little uh that black knees chick, hey, baby, bae, bae, her loud ass. I don't even think I'm going to like her. I mean, I could do a little bit loud, but that's just a little bit too much. So we're going to see how that is with Tommy or whatever and all of this shit. But I'm just waiting to see next week, see how this shit going to go because apparently the worm been with Jock, too. So, Worm, you get around, girl. I ain't hear nothing about Kiki, but I know the Worm be getting around. Maybe Kiki, too. I don't know. Both of y'all was with Bunyan Head, but that's pretty much it. This episode was okay. I mean, it was okay. I just didn't understand why Mimi had to put her two cents in this stuff that's going on with, uh, you know, Bunyan Head, Rashida, Kiki and the Worm, and Rob the Frog. That's your past. Let it stay in your past. What you need answers for. Especially when Rashida ain't call your line and ask you about shit. I just feel like that should have just stayed between shit. The person who really is the messiest one out of this all. And that's the Red Rooster. Everybody else, yeah. And I felt where Tammy was coming from. I ain't got time to deal with Red Rooster and her cock doo doo antics. I'm going to go to Rashida and talk to Rashida. I feel like that's what Mimi should have did. Same thing that Tammy did. Not sitting up here talking to everybody else instead of going to Rashida and checking to see how your friend is. That would have been my thing. But we all know it's for stunts and giggles and for a storyline, okay? Acting as worse. But anyways, y'all, that is my review for Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 6, Episode 3, Sister Wives. I can't wait to see what's going on this week. Well, next week, should I say. And my show comes back on tonight. I have to go to work. If love of you is wrong, I don't want to be right. I'm going to have to get some talk to some. I'm going to talk to Connections and see how I can watch that show. Because 
Oprah, your ass is wrong the fact that you got your little own app, but I don't see AT&T nowhere, AT&T U-verse as a damn TV provider. Or maybe I'm wrong. Y'all correct me because I want to watch my damn show. Y'all know I love that show, okay? And that is probably one of the videos that I get, you know, my highest reviews, well, not reviews, but highest views on it. Y'all know I'm a small YouTuber and proud of it and growing daily. Thank you to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. But I'm gonna, I got to get out of here. Because I got to get ready for work. I hope y'all enjoyed it. I am Miss Tink. That's M-I-Z-C, not M-I-S-S. You already know. Channels that you post TV, y'all. And I hope y'all have a blessed, 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 blessed day, okay? I'll talk to y'all in the next video. Deuces. Bye.